podcast, the only podcast that is perfectly balanced as all things should be. I am your host, Max Mosier, here today to talk about episode three of Secret Invasion. I am not alone. I am with one other member of the six Infinity Bro rotating cast. It is the man with the plan. Uh, it is Mark Jones himself. Mark, how are you? I am doing scrollish. Scrollish? Are you is is if we're in a scroll market, is that more bear or bullish? Mm. You totally went finance. I initially thought you were going grocery store. I don't know why. Um, I would say we are in a bullish. Uh, no, I'd probably say bear because we're getting we're going up. So, sure. Yeah, you you're like, hey, now's the time to buy. Yeah. The discounts are on. The discounts are on. Yeah. Financial advice wise, uh, do, are you looking at this show through three episodes as going trending down or slowly trending up or drastic, dramatic turn up after watching this? What are you thinking? Just non spoil your thoughts real quick. I would say with this episode, we are we're not going down, but our in our rate of investment, our interest rate, or however you want to say it, is has gone down a little bit, but we're still yeah. upward trending. We're still upward trending. But it's not it's not going vert, more vertical. It's kind of it's coming down a little bit, but it's not negative. So it's plateauing. It's plateauing. That's the word. Yeah, I'll that'd use. be a, a good one. Well, hey, uh, you didn't come here for scroll financial advice, but if you did, I'd I'd really question you. And uh, also welcome you. Uh, hey, we're glad you're here. Wherever you're listening, how are you listening? Uh, thanks for being us part of your podcast experience. You check us out on all these different types of links and social media platforms: Facebook, Instagram, Discord, Twitch. LinkedIn. No, I'm kidding. Don't go to LinkedIn. No, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. But um, could you imagine? I I think we could run that. I think we could run that and make us all employees of. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. And it's it's in the link in the show notes. Make sure you click that. There's the plug. We we'll plug on the at the very end, so you don't have to worry about that crap ever again. Today, uh, Secret Invasion episode three, uh, titled Betrayed, uh, aired July 5th, 2023. We're recording the same day, and Mark and I are going to give a complete spoiler breakdown of this show. If you haven't listened to our thoughts from the first two episodes, I'd encourage you to check those out as well. But we're going to spoil this episode, so we want to make sure that you know from moving forward from this point on, Mark might spoil something because he's on the edge of his seat all the time about this show. So I want to help him out and let him, let him go on that. So uh, this is officially your spoiler warning. This is Prepare Yourself An Infinity Bros Prepare Yourself Spoiler ah! Warning And then we're going to rate this show We're going to rate it uh, maybe characters, moments, uh, key plot points, directors, etc, etc So if this is your first time listening to us, we'll make sure you're familiar with our rating system Here on the Infinity Bros Podcast, everything is ranked from a 0 to 6 point scale Zero meaning horrible, and six meaning absolutely excellent. If all of the Infinity Bros rank something a six, it gets an Infinity Snap. Episode three, Betrayed. The synopsis is one sentence. Fury uncovers a rebel scroll plot. It's directed for the third time by Ali Salim, uh, written by Kyle Bradstreet, Roxanne Paredes, and Brian Tucker. This stars Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, Ben Mendelsohn as Talos, Olivia Coleman is Sonia Fallsworth, Amelia Clark as Gaia, Kingsley Ben Adir as Gravik, uh, Charlene Woodard, who was introduced last episode as Priscilla, Killian Scott as Pagan, and uh, then uh, Mark also, uh, our, our, if you like Happy Gilmore, Christopher McDonald is in this for a second episode in a row as Chris Stearns. I thought that was really funny. We didn't talk about him much last episode, but are you happy he's in the uh, Marvel Universe, I'm sure that's an actor you wanted in there. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted in there. I like it. I like that he's playing like a, a like a, like a Joe Rogan, Alex Jones, but like mass media type of guy. Like that's kind of his his guy that we got in the last episode. That he's supposed to be like the on the edge fringe type of reporter. I kind of was viewing him as Tucker a little bit. Really? Um, oh, maybe that's probably yeah, a better I, one. Yeah, I don't know. Alex Jones, maybe Alex Jones a little bit. But, but I, meant, like, I wouldn't put like him on the Rogan mainstream, though. Okay. Sure. I, I I look at Rogan as a completely different caricature compared to these other talking heads. Too. I meant that you're right. Because those Alex Jones and Joe Rogan are real journalists and reporters. <laughs> where Tucker is a fake <laughs> one. <laughs> 
we want it to be known that we're not political on this show, but Infinity Bro Jarrett does agree with what Mark just said, 100%. And I love pulling that thread. You know? Oh, that's so funny. That's so good. Do you think people, like, leaned in after that, or do you think that's that's the axe? We're done. We're not checking this show out anymore. We get canceled by who? I don't know, but we did. Ali Salim. Let's talk about him real quick. He's directed three episodes now. Before we get into the episode altogether, how are you feeling about his work as a director in this? Because... This show has had a different type of genre and feel to it from the get-go. We've talked about him in a couple previous episodes. He does not have many directing points outside of like, you know, criminal minds. And literally, like, he is just not that um he doesn't have much on his resume. So how have you felt through three episodes so far? Um, well, I'm glad the tone didn't change. I feel like the tone stayed the same. Uh clearly Daddy Feige picked the right guy. Um, I think he's doing great. I like I didn't yeah like the criminal like I've watched criminal minds I don't remember what seasons he did but like that's what like that's what the show is so good it's like it's in it's it's in that thriller mystery like war genre and it's just like staying staying true to that espionage loving it I love that the vibes pretty much stayed consistent in the last three episodes so hopefully it keep, keeps up so. And that's been a problem historically in other shows. We've talked about this on previous episodes. We're not going to dive deep into that. But it is encouraging to see through three episodes. It appears this is the tone we will have for the duration of this show. And we've talked pacing. I think this episode was a welcome, slowed one. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my rating and, and dive into this. And for being a shorter episode, too. It was. A shorter it was. This is a 44-minute episode, which... Again, I'll be honest with you, Mark. It just came back from July 4th this week and tired getting the kids to bed. They're rowdy. And, you know, I, I had to watch it before I came up here, uh, came down here to, to do this recording with you. And I'm I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased with this episode. I, I don't think it's better than episode two or one, but I don't think it had to be better than episode two or one. So I'm, I'm going to give this a, a, just a strong 5.1 out of six. Every episode has been awesome to me. It's made me lean in more. I don't think it's the greatest thing to ever grace Marvel's presence, but it is the most consistent of all the shows to date, in my opinion. And so I'm hoping, like you said, that this tone sticks. They do some pretty cool things. There's some pretty sweet Easter eggs in this. I think Ben Mendelsohn, this was his episode to shine. I think last episode was Rhodey's. I think this time it's Mendelsohn's as Talos. And I am also pleased with every episode not having a clue what's going to happen at the end. And this is a third time in a row where I've felt like, okay, I've gotten a unique twist that I was not expecting. And I think this episode didn't hold off. So 5.1 out of six for me. What was your rating, Mark? I'd probably give it a like a 5.27. I could, I could emulate what you said. I mean, just like the whole MCU as a series needed a Captain Marvel to advance a story, so does Secret Invasion. And I think this this one so far is the leader to advance in the story. Like, it wasn't bad. And and not come around. Captain Marvel, I watched it a few times the last few years, and it's, it's not bad. But I still think I'm still standing by that was just, that was just a filler to get us moving ahead. Max is now dead eyed and has wants to quit. And that's I'm a big I'm a big Captain Marvel guy. If you've never listened to us before, I love the movie. I think it's great. And I also I, I've been on the edge of my seat every time it's had a flashback. So today when it was in New York, I was like. Is Carol Danvers going to show up? I, I Yeah, right? Like, I'm just waiting for her to show up at this point. I, I really, really would like to see Brie Larson make at least a cameo in this, but I, I don't see it happening that way. Let's, I, let's talk about... No, I, go ahead. I got to my, the finish of my, my rating. I, I thought this episode for being shorter and being yeah, a little bit slower than the pacing, it did a really good job just, like, throwing you little bits of stuff, little bits, and just, like, kind of, like, will that come up later? Will this little thing be important down the road? Oh my gosh, they shot that person. Um, oh my gosh, they shot that person. Whose voice was that? That's how I felt the whole time in this episode. I loved it. Yeah, that last five minutes is what everyone's going to talk about. But also, we talked last episode about uh, Daisy Johnson showing up. She did not show up in this episode. Uh, I have a theory around that. I'll talk about that at the end as well. That has to do with Brilliant. the shooting at the end. So I'm going to leave the audience on that. But let's talk about 1998. So we get this flashback where Vera, the scroll from last week's flashback, there was a debate between you and I yes. about whether Nick Fury knew that she was a scroll. You believe she didn't. I believe she did. We we got confirmation in this scene as she rendezvoused with Fury. 
uh, um, that that he did know who she was and that she was. However, however, with this show, the one that we saw in the last episode could not be could potentially be not the same scroll. Potentially, right? That's I think that's always that's always something. A uh, cool little Easter egg here: General Drakov of uh, the Black Widow movie. She gives him intel to stop him. Whether that was the but that's a, they, they were trying to do something with the Red Room. So it would stand to reason that in Black Widow, there were some scrolls in that show. Uh, the scrolls did assist S.H.I.E.L.D. throughout the years by securing intel and secrets. We'll talk about Talos. No, we'll, we haven't talked about that. Talk, I thought that was wild. That was some good dialogue right there. Between yeah, and, and, and it also fills in some gaps of how Fury was able to do so much after Winter Soldier. Right. Right, I think that's a great answered question, avoiding life model decoys as well. So uh, flirty banter, et cetera, et cetera. And what did you think of Vara? Like, I, I, are, are you liking this new character edition? I still don't understand what they're doing with her. And I love that, Mark. I, I, she's so ambiguous. Like, and, and at the end, obviously, we'll talk about that scene. Well, that's the whole thing but... where it's just like, it seems so, knowing who we know as Nick Fury, it's like, yeah, of co- uh, like initially, it's like, why would he marry a scroll? But of course he would. Like, is is he doing it because he actually loves her? Or is he doing it to like, progress the safety of the human race like that's what it that'll be interesting what all unfolds at the end if anything does because yeah what like what's like my first thought is like what was nick fury's plans having a relationship with her if it wasn't purely just off of uh like physical connection or emotional connection fury's the kind of guy that would sleep in an alien. and let's be real and i i think too what what and this is again what this show is doing that i love they're talking about the consequences of this blip and I really appreciate that. And I thought her scene with Fury talking about how she changed as a person. What does that mean? Is that bad? Is that good? I don't know. Given um, the situation, yeah. I would agree. Yeah, and I love that. That's what this show is really cruising on right now is every scene you're wondering if the person that's talking is the real person. And the the, the line, I became me, I really, really appreciated that line not because I agree with the line, but because I was like, that's a really great representation of how I think a lot of people have been processing trauma and big things that have been happening in our, in our Mm -hmm. lifetime, especially the last five to 10 years, I think. So we'll talk about what happens at the end, but uh, Gravik shows the council members. uh, I don't know the, the the theme of Bobber, the the doohickey, the uh, scoobity bop, whatever we're calling it. That gives powers. The the scroll cerebro, basically. The scroll cerebro. There you go. Uh, and he drops the phrase super scrolls. Mark, how'd you feel about that? I got like, I got giddy. I was like, ooh, he said it. He yeah. said it. He said a thing that's a superhero or a villain or whatever you want to look at it. Well, then he even gets into like extinction of the human race. And this gets into the conversation he has with Ellis in a bit. And we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, there's something in that scene where I'm like, uh, there's more there's more superpowers than what uh, we know. Yeah, and, well, exactly. And I, I have a theory around that at the end that I'll talk about as well. So I, I, I reread secret invasion this last week, the, the big ultimate comic series that came out in the two thousands from Bendis that this whole show. And I would assume I, I'm calling it a series at this point, Mark, I don't know how they wrap this all up in three to three episodes. I don't think they have to wrap it up. I think this is the, I think this is a progression to whatever the next story is, whether that's the Marvel or or the Captain America movie. Because I feel because you heard because you saw the news I shared in the group where a certain someone's showing potentially showing up in the Captain America. Yeah, movie. well, we could talk about that in little bits, maybe on another episode. Let's save that for next episode. I want to save that for next episode because I want I want to see if more comes out about that. I just I I reread Secret Invasion and I'm really really interested to see how do they convince our heroes that certain people are back or that certain people are dead or alive or that certain people are who they are. There's a really, really, really great scene with Clint and, um, Oh, I forget the gal's name now. Crud his love interest in it. Forgive me guys. I'm being a bad comic book host here, but in, in the comic, she comes out of this ship that lands that has scrolls impersonating the heroes. And it creates this whole dilemma of who's who and she articulates a miscarriage that her and Clint have. And to me, I was like, I could totally see this happening with Laura Barton down the line in a movie. I could totally see Linda Cardellini pulling off something like this. And I could totally see Jer- Jeremy Renner absolutely crushing this scene, especially with the Junior Hawkeye show that just came out. So 
it seems like that that I'm really hoping this show can set up for either a movie or a big 12 episode series. Maybe Disney wants to bring all these big actors in for one big show, maybe kind of like an Avengers show or Defenders with Netflix. I I really hope so. Uh but we get the evidence um we get the evidence of Super Scrolls here and then we get the big conflict with Talos and Gravik, which in my opinion Mark was th- Last week, we had a great scene with Rhodey and Nick Fury. We get to the museum scene where he's sitting down for coffee and they're discussing the differences between bureaucrats and soldiers. And just this huge kind of conflict occurs about the future of scrolls as a nation. It's two two different sides that stand for the past, present, and future. What did you think of this scene? And what did you think of... Uh, in particular, Mendelssohn and, and how he's conducting himself. He's owning these scenes. Oh, yeah. Well, Mendelssohn's doing great. Just talking to the story, though, it seems like so wild to me that Gravik's like hell bent on killing all the humans when literally he's in the situation because another group of species were killing and destroying the scrolls. So he's literally becoming the people that he's had the fight against to get where he is. And now he's becoming the villain. And it's like, I wonder if that will be self-actualized in himself do you think there will be some flashback showing why he is the way he is right now oh i i hope so because at this point just like in another series that i didn't like how it ended i don't want him to be redeemed at this point like i, I don't think there's a redeemable sure. thing i also don't want him to be killed like you know robbie hates when villains get killed but like i just hope he doesn't get redeemed i hope he stays a villain and he just gets banished somewhere and we see him again that's how i kind of hope it ends or like how this episode seemed like it was going i was like oh they might actually pull the trigger on this and really really throw a firecracker into the the whole MCU world. So I mean there's a chance Priscilla, Charlene Woodard's character, is going to be this big leader of the scrolls. Yeah, I mean that that's what could happen. And that creates its own tension with Nick Fury that he has to rally his troops, she rallies her troops as well. I I could foresee that. I think Kingsley Benadir is absolutely menacing right now, Mark. And I, oh, yeah. I, I really I hope I agree. I hope he does not die. I would like to see him square off against sam wilson i would like to see him square off against all these other people well i just think like could you imagine if in some weird way it happens um gravik and uh the high evolution team up or get together in some fashion can you imagine those two guys like working together like yeah like he's hell-bent on getting scrolls into a certain a certain way and he would be the perfect guy to help him figure that out so yeah i agree i and those I two guys i feel like as of now are you know the most maybe besides if you brought back Ultron, like those two guys are like the most evil characters, like yeah, menacing. Like they're not they they got literally no reason but to, for themselves, and they'll do that at all costs. Versus like you know you look at Thanos, like yeah he had the power to do everything, but he had a he kind of had a reason and like a reason that people could back up. But these guys, it's just like they're insane. So I think for Gravik's character at this point, we just need a great finishing to the backstory. We need to see some things. We've talked about it. Now it's time to show it. Well, especially was it the yeah the second episode where we're like yeah he, him as a, like a teenager defended himself and got here so I just imagine a flashback we're gonna see he doesn't he gets there by killing not only maybe the people that you know what was it the Kree that were attacking them yeah yeah killing Kree and potentially maybe killing his killing his own kind to get to get away so I think that'll be telling of his character if that that's shown so and then we get the married couple that is talos and fury and i i gotta tell you mark i loved i, I oh, love that wait, the one thing we, we forgot when talos like because uh he's using jaya's name uh graphic is and then talos finally stat because we get revealed yes, yes, that everyone you. in the room is is scrolls and then it kind of ends with him stabbing graphic in the hand and he like pulls the hand out like it heals himself which is like that's and it's like that bright red color. It's like, that's Killian's uh, thing from Iron Man 3. Yes, that would be the extremist protocol that was developed by Killian. So he does have that power now. But then, like, how do we get access to that? That's the whole, That's where I want. I want I want both, like, how he got... Well, yeah, but that... Oh, yeah, it's... it's, it's I'll if, get it, Talos it's, it's, said it. If, if He says it later in the scenes that we were going to talk about. I, it, Talos, Talos and Fury go through this amazing conversation of talking about all the backstories here. So, like... Talos says, like, look, the last 30 years, I did everything for you. You were nothing without me. And Fury... Yeah, you, you ran the ranks because of us. Is yeah, the Fury, to Talos' credit, did have the ultimate secret weapon that he didn't have to tell anybody else about. 
but also Talos needed somebody to point him in where to go because Talos and the big twist in Captain Marvel that I think is so powerful is that these scrolls are good guys. These specific scrolls are good guys. And I really love this scene. I love that Mendelssohn and Fury are grasping with like, you were gone for five years. You have been telling me to go to places and you have not been showing me gratitude. Not that I needed gratitude. And then, you know, they're going through this scene, totally stopping this massive attack on a UN plane. We get this innocent kid in it. Is he a scroll? Is he not a scroll? We don't necessarily get that answer, but we see Fury's dark side of like, I will point this gun at this kid. Like Fury still is a tough dude. He's a tough mofo in this. Did you get, so when, when they, when Nick Fury finally um, gets to, Talos in that bar where he's eating. Did you have a, a, an initial vibe that maybe that's a scroll fury? 1000%. This whole show, Mark, I didn't know if Gaia was talking to like Gravik. I didn't know if that was the real Gravik talking to, well, exactly. talking to, to Talos. Well, it's for sure a super scroll because of how he healed. Um, so, it's, so in my opinion, that's the tell that it's Gravik. He's the super scroll right now. And the thing with the Nick Fury with my thought, it was like, well, well, like they made it pretty prev or like pretty obvious in the first episode that he has a limp, and like I didn't really notice that. I'm gonna have to rewatch it in this episode when he comes when he comes to that bar, that when he's walking, and when they're at that house, that he really doesn't walk with a limp. So that's the sure. thing where it's it's like it's just those little details. Like it makes you like, did I am I just seeing it wrong? I'm sure someone's gonna be yelling right now, be like, oh, he he walked with a limp, you stupid mf'er, you know, blah blah blah, you know, stuff like that. But you know. That's what, that's what I love about this show. It's like there's so much that could just totally be a lie, or scrolls in this case. But yeah, you know, or there could be something that like down the line we saw a scene a, a certain way, and then we find out from somebody else's perspective. Like all great espionage shows and movies, right? I hope we get an ep- we get that where it's just like a huge reveal of like pinpointing through the MCU or just this series of like oh. He- Here's where he was a scroll. Here's where he was. This wasn't is the a scroll. ultimate retcon tool, Mark. This is like if there's stuff in the MCU that Kevin Feige's like, I can't really figure out how to fix this. Go ahead and fix it right here. We need well, to fix it with the scroll. Yeah, like I, I think there's really great opportunities here with that. I, I'm, I'm just really, really impressed with how they've managed to make this show about Nick Fury. And there's a lot of stakes in this show. This is, this is the first in my opinion, Disney plus show that actually has stakes for literally everybody in this universe. Everybody in this universe is at the will of how this show ends, because if this show doesn't end with some type of resolution or secrecy of scrolls, if it's completely out in the open, the Avengers can't even begin to exist because it's like in the secret invasion comic. If they can't be trusting each other, They don't even know if they're talking to a loved one. And Fury knows this. And that's what I love. He is carrying this burden and this weight in this. And Samuel L. Jackson is just putting on a clinic in this show with minimal dialogue. I'm really, really impressed with what he's doing as well. I can agree with you, but I think people are would probably are saying right now, it's like, well, the Loki season ended with the multiverse spreading i'm i'm more so saying sorry i'm talking about for the civic globe forgive me the mcu well, yes I, but that, no i'm i would say they're they're one in one in my in my opinion because yeah you're right with a million people out there who that are a million scrolls out there yeah it's just as dangerous it's just i think it poses not an equal threat but a very menacing threat like the multiverse splitting and then the whole what do they call it when the worlds are colliding and the universe is colliding what was that that phrase that oh well, incursion yeah incursion there you go yeah so like you know that's civil also- war is the reason infinity war happened right like you split up the avengers they didn't trust each other they, they split up like a band i think this is the catalyst that will split the avengers for the multiverse but you would say there there really isn't an avengers right now that's kind of what we've alluded to the last two years there's not really been a, there's been like groups of like when they because what do you say like in this i forget what scene it was when they were talking about starting the war with you know the uk blowing up that un plane is like all the heroes will come and then we'll like basically change into them or show them our might. Sure. So it's like, well, who's who right now is coming to that call? That's a, like you would you would consider a superhero. That's the problem with the MCU right now, though. That's that's not a this show's problem. That's an MCU Kevin Feige problem. And my hope is the next Captain America addresses this. And oh yeah, that's I that's really do. I hope needed. that show addresses. And that's where like I think we could we could believe that this show might lead to that and not necessarily the marvels but then the marvels trailer shows um you know 
show Sam Jackson. So I don't know. I guess we'll just find out. I don't know, man. But um, do, 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 great scene from them. Uh, then he obviously infiltrates the general's place. They stop the bomb. Olivia Coleman called and gave them the tip. Everyone that. is a scroll. Besides, uh, unknowingly, we don't know if the kids are scroll. That's what I thought was wild. It's like I think the kids. Because I was like, why? Too. Why is Nick Fury just shooting people? And he yeah, just like, I think, did I miss yeah. something where like he knew? They were all scrolls, or just Nick Fury's going to shoot people because he can't trust anybody. I think this was just a, we have to do this because this will result in the world blowing up, so we got to shoot people a moment. Wild. Okay, let's talk about then Gaia. So Gaia has, we, we get confirmation that she has been the traitor this whole time. We've we've seen it. It's been alluded the, the to. The informant. The informant. Yes, uh, informant. Yeah, she's, she's still mad at Talos for what he's done, but she, at the end of the day, has been loyal. She's to realized. Fury. Um, before this scene too before she escapes ben mendelson's talos looks at fury and says you asked if i'm loyal to gravic he says i'm loyal to you fury and i really really liked this line i i feel like captain marvel is getting to be a better movie because of this show because of just how much affection and appreciation those two characters have for each other Mm -hmm. they're such an old married couple and i love that energy and i love that tone that they're bringing and i love just I love what they're doing. Olivia Coleman was in this for 10 seconds. I am so all in on Sonia Fallsworth, Mark. I am so in on this character. I want more of it. I want her. I, I think she should lead the Thunderbolts instead of whatever they're doing with Louis. I, I think she is way more menacing, in my opinion, than what Dave Fontaine, uh, Julie Ray, Dre- Ray Dreyfus is doing right now. I think she should be doing it. I'm just going to put that out there. I hope she gets Saber. I hope that's what happens. We'll see. We'll see I'm really happens. pulling for that. I'm really, really pulling for that. And then we get the big scene where Amelia, Amelia Clark escapes and she is shot by Gravik. This is pretty wild. So do you have any theories of it? What was your reaction to seeing this? Uh, my first reaction is like, well, it's Amelia Clark. They didn't really just kill her after three episodes is my opinion. Um, but then it's like, well, would she have been smart enough to, or like sinister or like, like, how do you look at it? It's like, did she send someone else? Be like, Hey, I need you to look like this person and leave. So then I can get away. And then like, probably knowing that you're going to get shot or she, you know, playing it off. Did she, well, we're going to see that she had like, she was prepared to like, Oh, I know I'm going to get shot. So I got to have stuff, you know, bleed out and just hope he doesn't shoot me in the head type of thing. So my two I theories, I, I talked about these theories at the top of the episode. I, my two theories right now are that one, I think she is a super scroll. Uh, this is the one I'm leaning into. I think the next episode we'll see her get healed or get come back healed. and be like, how'd you do that? And, you're, and she has the extremist. And that's how her her and her and Gravik will fight. And they're kind of two opposite. They're, they're foils to each other right now. Their stories are, they're aligned. They're similar. I, I think that's the showdown. I don't think it's like Fury and Gravik. I think it's her and Gravik. So okay. I, I foresee that being a showdown in this in this show, and I I hope that's her. The other one that I this is a crackpot theory I read on Twitter that she's actually Daisy Johnson, or the, the scroll, the scroll is dead. The human she was impersonating was Daisy Johnson, who was captured by Fury, and Fury said, "Hold on to her. We want to keep her just in case. We want to keep her safe, but we want to keep her in a spot where nobody else would know about her. Let's give her to the to the scrolls." And then they'll be able to, yes, they'll be able to get some super scroll energy from her, but also we'll know where she is. So that's kind of my crackpot theory. I don't know. How- so, so so your thought is like that the person that guy is impersonating is alive. Yes. That's the but other guy, but guy is dead. Is that, that's the theory. That's the other theory. And I don't know if it's, she's playing Daisy Johnson. Some people think she's playing brand who does th- that character does take over sword eventually in the comics. They think that's who she is. So I, I, I don't know if that's the case. I just more so I'm with you. You don't pick up Amelia Clark to not come back. And Amelia Clark doesn't sign on to this as well as Olivia Coleman without intentions of coming back into the show. And, and oh, I'm so, sure. Like they're Asians, like, oh yeah, but they're they're big names. What 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 more are you giving us? We're not doing one series. So And you're not paying ten million bucks for three. And they're years. not and they're not a, a villain where it's like, yeah, you're gonna probably get killed at the end. They're like, these are these are good people. So like you're not heroes, gonna, right. Yeah. Sure. And then we get the ambiguous scene. I think this is the one that everyone will be talking about, Mark. And if you watch with subtitles on, it doesn't give anything away. It does not. I also watch with subtitles. So 
Priscilla gets a very mysterious phone call, after which she went to access a safety deposit box. Uh, she finds a gun, which she's like, whatever about. Who do you and think? Then, who do you think called her when she was with Fury? I think it's Rhodey. I think this has been the scroll that has been playing Rhodey. Go on. That's just my opinion. My opinion. Is I, that I, I want to know your play. opinion. That's and that's okay. Yeah. That's the go on. The go on is I think that was who it was, and I think Fury knows this. Um, I also think she doesn't care if Fury knows it. I think she has her own agenda right now. I don't know what that is, but she she strikes me as a character that's on her own. So we're we're back. On, you and I are on the table that we are ninety nine percent sure. Rhodey's a scroll. Yeah, last week you were. I, I, was I like, could follow the argument yeah. that he's not a scroll based on the argument. But again, just after the last two episodes, well, here's the other thing. Fury, we get another scene where Fury says, nobody calls me Nick. Well, mm-hmm. what did Rhodey call him last episode? He called him Nick. Now, in previous movies, Iron Man and Natasha Romanoff have Rhodey, called him Nick. Rhodey's been a dick, though. That's kind of his, like, thing. But I'm making more of a point that in this show, for him to say Nick is a clue. Yes. Or it's a red herring. Maybe, but I'm 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 counting it as a clue. To him being a scroll, but or, or it could be like him and Rhodey have never really been friends. Maybe I I'm I don't know I don't get that vibe. I think Fury was testing. I think Fury knows that Rhodey's a scroll. Like I don't think I'm not buying the one kind of miss. But then I think it'll be it'll show, be interesting to find out how long has Rhodey been a scroll. Yes, that that's the question. I hope they answer here. I I think Fury. I'm not buying the like, oh, he's out of the game argument. I don't like that. I think that's been a miss in this show. And maybe they'll give us that answer here in the next three episodes. But I haven't seen any information to go, okay, he's out of the game. Unless this is like a life model decoy. And the real Nick Fury is going to show up down the stretch and be like, let's roll, baby. And like, he's actually looking younger and more fit. I don't know. But I'm I'm not buying that. So like, but I love the conversations he's having with everybody because of what yeah. it's doing for their characters. And so I think this is anyway, getting back to Priscilla in her phone call, the the call says St. James church, one hour. She asks to speak to Rhodey. Everyone in their mom thinks it's Ro- uh, speak. Grave, excuse me. Everyone in their mom thinks this is Rhodey. I think it's Rhodey. Rhodey's a scroll and that's okay. We've wanted this. We've asked for it. This isn't a surprise to us. It's still going to be awesome next week when he shows up and he's a scroll or, you know, just, you know, get into the weeds being, you know, a little conspiracy theorist. Or is Rhodey, is there a potential that Rhodey is human, but is working with the scrolls? Not a chance. He would that, do that. So like, that, that's off the table. Okay. That's off the table to me. He's either a scroll, or this is a scroll impersonating Rhodey with intention to take Rhodey from the, the hot seat he's in. Maybe we see in this show the scroll take over Rhodey. Because that's been my thought. It's like, that's kind of the whole like gasping of secret invasion and the scrolls is like, Oh yeah, we're gonna go see that Rhodey this whole time since Iron Man two or Iron Man three has been a scroll, and it's just been scrolling around, infiltrating the Avengers, getting higher up the totem pole, in in the government, as a scroll. Like I think that I like if I had the if if we're gonna get revealed he's a scroll, I want that versus like oh he became a scroll in the last like two years. I really think that Marvel has a very unique opportunity to add more side characters and up their value in the mark in this whole mcu thing i think you have an opportunity you and i have talked about this i think it would be amazing to have all of the wakandan side characters be scrolls like how were they able to be so amazing for so long oh well it's because so many scrolls were helping them along the way i would love that what is what does that mean for leticia wright's character like what would that mean for her my brother's dead and now my culture is essentially dead because the scrolls put their culture into mine and helped me advance and on top of that story, are these people dead or are they in some giant warehouse yep. somewhere? Mm-hmm. And they're they're still there, but they weren't they haven't been involved at all. Yeah, they they gentrified us essentially. You could do a gentrification arc with scrolls and 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 Wakanda. I think it it could really work. Yeah, give Kugler that one. I think he could really crush that. But this might be something this might be something where we've we've over overdone what they could do. Because it's like that seems yeah. like at the end of the day, that's a lot to then put on the audience. Like someone like my beautiful wife, Kelly, where she's like, I just don't know what's going on. And that's because it's like, well, sure. Yeah, no, you got to know a lot now at this point to kind of like get it. So I think at this point, it's going to have to be revealed through a couple movies or other shows at this point. Mm-hmm. Like, I just think that's the direction this has to go. 
you and I have talked about this. I, I think this is a prelude. I don't think this is like the actual secret invasion. I think this is like, holy crap, Nick Fury just found out about this. And this is Nick Fury's arc the rest of the way. When this thing is done, so like when they beat the scrolls, Nick Fury's going to be dead. This is his Iron Man arc. This is, he has to finish this. I'm with you. I don't think, I wouldn't be surprised if this series ends where it's like, no, this was literally, like you said, the prelude. This is like us going into Secret Invasion. And Secret yes. Invasion is going to be, just like King Guy or the King stuff, is going to be intertwined with all the movies and series going forward. And I think they could probably backpedal on the King Dynasty right now with everything that's going on with Majors. Like, just sidestep it, say, all right, let's go. We're going to do this and keep the same people on. And You can pretty much tell the same story. What's the problem with Olivia Coleman and Amelia Clark being your centerpieces of the MCU guys? Like nothing. Uh, we already got, we already have Brie Larson as our centerpiece. We don't need another centerpiece. <laughs> I'm just saying these are great side characters that that work well with Samuel L. Jackson. And I think you have to have also have a real conversation of can Samuel L. Jackson give you another five years, ten years? I, I don't know. He's pretty doggone old. Maybe maybe not ten years, but you know he's got to be. We got to get him out of there and put somebody else in there. I haven't said that. They just casted Thunderbolt Ross with Harrison Ford, and he's like 80. Dude, so. that's different. That's a completely different conversation. That's for one movie. Don't play me like that. Do you think Guy is dead or she's coming back, Mark? Oh, well, after what you said, what you read about her being like, it's like the real humans coming back. I could see, well, for sure, in some fashion, Mila Clark isn't gone from this yes. series. Whether she comes back as Gaia or I'm with you, I'm with you on the train that she's also a super scroll. We might get that in the next episode where she like did whatever, had to take whatever, or like put herself to the process. However, it happened. And we're gonna see her like, yeah, basically push out the bullet, like we saw in the X movies when Wolverine pushed out bullets. I would be surprised if that happens. Yeah, I don't think she's dead either. Don't think she's dead. Samuel Jackson's 74. So yes, he's if we're going based off Harrison Ford rules, he's got another 10 years in him. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just th these are some big old rules for him. He's sitting a lot in this show too, right? He's I said like, that I said that last week or last he's week. He's yeah. walking up to a bar, he's sitting down and and I think he's letting the other people carry. He's just such a like presence. It's but that's or well, that's why they showed us with him with the limp is that he isn't a young fury. He is an old fury who's, you know, you know, he's in his sunset years. Like yeah, it's he's... old man Logan. Yeah, they're doing old man Logan with Nick Fury. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, well, that's Secret Invasion episode three, guys. Make sure you check uh, check it out on Disney+. Plus. If you listened and didn't watch, what the heck's wrong with you? You're crazy. You're a crazy person. You're we love nuts. It. We're glad you're here. Thanks for coming. Mm. Um, Mark, thank you for coming on and being part of this day. And hopefully next, next week, this time, we're talking about Don Cheadle being a scroll. Could you imagine if we're not? Like, oh, man. like what right. I said, like it's, he's gonna be a scroll, but that'd be hilarious. Like, oh no, Mark, you're right. He he was a human working with the scrolls. He's even more of a dirtbag. Yeah. Could it be a scroll just impersonating his voice? Could it be the the president impersonating his voice? The president's no. a scroll and he's impersonating his voice. I didn't even think about that, Max. And that's what I love about the show is you don't know what it could be because they gave us yeah. that with with Talos impersonating that that uh, commander. So. It's pretty, I know. would say this too, go back and look at the inter interactions that Nick Fury has had with people post Captain Marvel. That's, that's my caveat post Captain Marvel. Look at the interactions he's had where people's called him Nick. It's there's some interesting ones. And Rhodey called him in episode two, Nick. They only call him Fury. That's the established rules of this character is that his tight knit group calls him that. Hmm. How about that? How about that? Thank you for checking us out today. Wherever you listened, however you listen, thanks for making us part of your podcast experience. Everything we talked about is in the link in the show notes. Uh, make sure you follow us. Uh, check out our TikTok stuff too. If you're into Magic the Gathering, uh, and Vinny or Robbie, who's on the show as well, does some really great stuff. We want to make sure we pass it on to that. And uh, Magic Monthly, we talked about that uh, in our Patreon. You can get exclusive Patreon content, basically another episode. We talked for 38 minutes. It's essentially a whole another episode. You can get a full hour, hour and 18, hour 20 minutes of content if you subscribe to that it's just a couple bucks a month helps us pay the bills and keeps the light on keep keep the lights on excuse me and robbie uh, can send his kids to school you know <laughs> robbie can eat robbie <laughs> robbie doesn't have to just buy magic cards he can actually eat food 
So uh, eating cardboard doesn't help the hunger. But yeah, make sure you support us and uh, subscribe and send us some uh, some feedback. What do you think about Secret Invasion? Who do you think is a scroll that we're missing? We'd love to know your thoughts as well. So we love you guys 3000. We'll see you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Infinity Bros Podcast. You can find the Infinity Bros on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Infinity Bros. Feel free to send listener feedback via email at infinitybrospodcast at gmail.com.